What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Brown Girl Green. My name is Christy Drutman, and I interview environmental leaders and advocates about the importance of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as creative solutions to the climate crisis. I'm working to change the image of what it means to be an environmentalist in the 21st century. Super excited for today's live podcast episodes, my first ever live podcast. And we are having it here in Brooklyn, New York, here at the Reclip Festival, a festival all about creativity, reimagining the world of fashion, and really coming up with a marketplace that is really creating a new platform, especially for BIPOC uh, fashion designers and people focused on, you know, community-driven solutions to the fast fashion crisis. And I really love this festival because it's bringing artists together, creatives, experts who are all together trying to create a new third space for redefining fashion. And I'm really excited to have this conversation with a member of the Reclip team and very excited to talk with her about her views on circular fashion. What does that even mean? What is circular fashion and why should you care about it? So let's get into it. So excited to have you here today, Jaji. Jaji Lasad is the partnership coordinator of Reclipped. Jaji is passionate about circular fashion and reducing fashion waste. She first began attending Reclipped events during Climate Week in 2022, and over the past year has evolved from participant to ambassador to now being a member of the Reclipped team. She is currently a student at Queens College studying economics and environmental studies with plans to work in sustainable finance. Woo! Bearing this in mind, she was wary of developing her sustainability experience in the financial sector and instead has entrenched herself in community-based initiatives to develop a strong foundation of intersectional environmental justice. Let's have a hand for Jaji. So excited to have you on the show today. And as people listening may not know, this is also Jaji's first ever podcast. Thank you for having me. Very exciting to be here. I've been a fan of yours separately from being a part of Reclift. And so, as you mentioned earlier, I'm now like a recurring character in the Brains Book Green universe, yes. which is accidental. So to be an accidental recurring character is a feat in and of itself. So thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here, Jaji. And I wanted to know the topic of today's conversation is this concept of circular fashion. Can you tell people what the heck that means? So circular fashion is kind of breaking the mold of what we typically understand the fashion of. You buy something for one occurrence, one day, one event, and then you kind of ignore it and you buy new outfits for, honestly, we got we got beyond seasonal shopping and there's micro seasons now. So circular fashion is going back a little bit to how we were initially getting into developing personal style. And to be circular, you kind of have to understand the end of the life cycle of your items. So kind of extending its full life cycle like an item you buy once instead of just wearing it to one event and throwing it out or whatever which we don't love instead we now wear it to multiple events we style it differently if it becomes worn out or it needs any mending we do that and we also if we are you know beyond our time with that item we pass it on to somebody else more so directly to ensure it gets a loving home and yeah that's kind of how i think about the circular fashion <laughs> i love that and Can you explain to people why does this matter? What exactly are the main environmental and social impacts of fast fashion? And why is it crucial for the fashion industry to shift away from it towards a more circular model? Yeah, so the circular idea of fashion is kind of based in like, fashion is actually one of the most polluting industries, only secondary to like fossil fuel industry, which most people really don't know, but based in a capitalistic uh, society, Yeah, so basically the current fashion industry, again, as I mentioned, is all about these micro trends. And micro trends is already bad enough in terms of consumerism, but also the production, again, will lead to the excess of waste. Waste in terms of the people throwing out their outfits again right after one wear, but also the amount of water and chemicals used to produce each clothing item, as well as the people who are making the clothes are typically marginalized communities, people of color in the global south who are honestly being disrespected in how their work is being utilized really because fashion is a creative you know art form and to do that manual labor is a beautiful thing but it should really be paid properly and the way people are getting their clothes so cheaply is really undermining the skills required to do so and it's enforcing this really unhealthy balance of excess work 
where these people who are in these factories kind of doing excess labor extended amount of time and not making money from it kind of in a situation of servitude where it's not really it's in those other countries for a reason as it's not legal in the global north because it's not helpful to those people yeah exactly i think you know people say well i want to express myself through fashion i can't afford something more sustainable like i'm just trying to get by while also trying to express myself right and fashion is supposed to be this vehicle for that you know self-expression which is very valid but i think you know with that self-expression we also have to understand like what is that expression connected to you know who like what are the impacts behind that expression and you know it is important to evaluate as part of how you're expressing yourself also knowing where your clothes come from and knowing who made your clothes and I think it's an important new narrative shift on like okay it's not just about that this type of clothing is in did this clothing is this clothing in in terms of you know its ethics in terms of how it was made I think that that needs to be a part of the conversation in terms of what's trendy. And I feel like that's not as much as part of the conversation as it needs to be. Yeah, I think especially when it comes to developing a personal style, the micro trends I was mentioning before kind of takes away from that where everybody is developing the same style. Like on social media, you can kind of see everyone wears the same thing at the same time. Right. As you're developing their style, I do appreciate like the, the availability of different styles for people. But people really do need to take the time to... <laughs> determine what they like and I think that's available to be done without excessive shopping like I honestly don't know the last time I purchased clothes wow. I maybe six months I don't know so I'm very selective I like to be a very conscious consumer but I'm also already in these spaces and when you're in these spaces of circular fashion of community building around fashion there's less need to shop like I go to swaps or I come to an event like today and I made a belt. I had haven't owned a belt in years. Now I have one. <laughs> and I made it. So I'm probably going to keep it for a really long time. And also it's the idea of like community sharing. Like if I have a friend now who is also in this space with me, instead of them thinking, oh, I'm just going to donate this item to whomever, they're just going to give it to me directly, <laughs> which works for me. Yeah. And yeah. And so like people who are watching this, like my top and my dress are from Swaps, a.k.a. free but <laughs> community-based so it's really somebody else was getting something out of their road room that didn't fit them anymore and it's something that spoke to me and I really love to have items in my closet that speak to me that like when I pick it up I'm like oh my god look at you you're so cute now you're gonna be worn by me <laughs> and it's just like I love my clothes to make me feel very excited and especially like to have a story behind it like this dress specifically I got from like a swap at this location so today I was like oh my god it's gonna come back and I'm going to be wearing it this time, which is also just, it's very fulfilling for me. And I think fashion and style should be less so about fulfilling other people's visions of who you might be perceived to be, more so about yourself. And I think it's important to showcase your values in your style as well. That was so great. I, I agree. I think it's about redefining where we're even getting our clothes and do we need to purchase this thing? And it's about slowing down and being more intentional, right? A lot of people in the slow fashion movement talk about the need to be more intentional on how you're approaching what you're wearing, why you're wearing it, how you're wearing it, you know? And I think those are the questions that I think you just brought up that are a, a personal journey, right? You know, with your personal style, you also have to address like, you know, what are your boundaries and your limits in terms of like your budget or, you know, where you're sourcing things from and you know, what a company stands for, it can be kind of overwhelming, you know, at the same time. But I love that you bring up, hey, maybe it doesn't have to be that complicated. It could be as simple as having clothing swaps with your friends. It could be getting something secondhand. It could be extending the life of a pair of pants or a skirt and just adding a new patch to it, dyeing it a new color, right? It doesn't have to be this whole in-depth research on exactly what you need to buy and when you need to buy it, right? Because that, again, dives into this mindset of like it needs to happen right now it needs to be quick to be on trend it's like what if you could define your own trends what if you define your own path right so i really love that so reclips the festival we're, we're at today i want to want to plug them you know reclip believes that style lasts longer with community can you expand on this ideology and, and delve a bit more into some of the community-based workshops and events that you all do to promote this yes of course so reclips 
Okay, so as I mentioned, I kind of got involved with Reclip because I went to an event. And so how that works is you kind of just build a community. And when you do build this community, you kind of get to share. And it's all about sharing knowledge, really. So when you come to our events, we typically have a couple of instructors. And our instructors are people who are active with us. Like, they're actually, like, friends of ours. We have some out here. Holly, hi. <laughs> So yeah, so Holly and other instructors of ours will like guide people who attend our workshops just to learn different things. So the one that I went to was actually just like a fashion show and there was a bunch of different vendors like on the marketplace who are all upcycle designers. And that was like an like an accidental thing. I think I just saw it like on a climate week spreadsheet and I was like, whatever, I'll go. <laughs> and then I went and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I've just kept going to different events. And for me, fashion has always been somewhat inaccessible and like I don't it's not something I was like always allowed to be involved in like growing up my mom is a fashion designer and she's like you can do whatever you want not that and, and so I was like okay if you give me all the other options I can't really be mad about it <laughs> and so accidentally falling into like a fashion space where it's kind of it's for the average person so I don't when I accidentally fell in I didn't feel like I was overstepping I was like well it's for the regular people so it's fine because <laughs> it's more so we're all about extending the knowledge to the average person because people who are already in the fashion world they already know how to mend their clothes they already know what's available to them in terms of darning a sock or adding a patch but it's like the average people who would typically just replace something we have to bring them into the knowledge it's also me it's true yeah so it's also about like building community and letting people know it's an option so we don't really force people to like get involved in our workshops whenever it's more like Whatever you want to do, we have the information, we have the knowledge, we have the supplies, we're, we love to answer questions. If we can't answer it, we will direct you in the right um, direction to get those ans those questions answered. But it's really just about, like, the idea of the circular fashion playground. It's all about playing and being exploratory, just like kids learn new skills growing up just by doing different things and trying different things. We're allowing that, expressing that for adults. I really love that. And... You know, I think a big part of like learning how to like mend your clothes and things like that, it adds a whole new dimension to your relationship with that. I was in Cambodia last year doing my first ever like documentary focused on sustainable fashion, specifically with garment makers in Cambodia. And, you know, the story there was we were trying to say what Cambodia is viewed as this this hub for fast fashion. But what could it look like instead to actually show, you know, it was a slow fashion brand, Tone Lay, shout, shout out to Tone Lay, who, you know, pays their workers beyond a living wage. And we wanted to document what does that look like instead? How do we actually flip the script that Cambodian women don't have to be these victims of these systems that like there's actually opportunities and like what does giving them agency over their own designs, over their own creations, what, what new power dynamic does that create between you know, a company and a fashion entity and the consumer, right? And I think same way with redefining mending and sewing. And the reason I'm bringing up the story is because I had a lot of imposter syndrome around sewing and they were like, guess what? You're going to learn how to use a sewing machine. And I sat there and I literally like was sweating. I was so nervous. And I remember like the first like stitch I did, I like screamed. I was like, oh my God, did I do that wrong? Like I was freaking out. And then they were like, no, like, you know, just hold down the garment, try it a few times. It's fine if you fail. Like, we're here for you to, like, learn. And I think that's a big part of it. So I love that Reclipped is about not like, oh, you don't already know that. It's like, oh, like, you know, you're not in. It's like, no, if we really want sustainable fashion, we want to tell people to mend and do these things that maybe, like, our ancestors or, like, our elders have done for a long time. And that, like, that can be cool. Like, I think that that's a whole new conversation, right? I think sometimes people are like, oh, if I have to sew or if I get a hole in this, okay, I got to throw it out. It's like, no, you can actually redefine your relationship with that fabric or that item and then it gets a whole new definition, right? So I really love that Reclipped creates this space for people to like, to hone in on that. That's, that's amazing. So, you know, diving into some of your workshops, you obviously talked about your belt. You can show everyone. Okay. I made the mini version. There's a bigger version floating around somewhere. <laughs> It's basically, this is upcycled denim, and we just made a little flower. There's a little rhinestone in the middle. And so I, again, in terms of, like, my personal style, I'm not really that heavy on accessories, so I wanted to make a small version. And the main one that was being, like, showcased was a larger one. And it's also just being about knowing that you can always just ask. 
knowing that you can always just feel around like what are the options available to me even if they aren't showcased explicitly if the resources are there they're probably accessible to you You just gotta ask for it so i just asked i was like can i make mine smaller and yeah and she she was showcasing it as a choker and i already wear a choker i wear this is my one choker i've been wearing since over 10 years now (laughs) and so like i'm not replacing this choker with another choker but this dress when i did get it here has a belt loop and since it's crocheted, I'm not going to cut it because that's going to mess it up. So I was like, I need to do something with this belt loop since I don't wear belts. So I was like, I'm going to make a belt today. And it all worked out. It's, it's accidental. Like everything comes together. Everything is circular by accident naturally. Right. So the idea that I come here to have a circular fashion playground event and then I happen to make a belt for this dress without the intention to do the, do so. I just wore the dress because I was like, that's where I got it from. I'm just going to wear it here. Right. And. And that's where the joy comes in, right? I think people can feel so, like, caught up in the the doom and gloom of, like, choices and paradox of choice and all these things. But it's like, you know, what it, What about a third option? Like, you don't have to be an artist or a creative. You can do things in community. And, like, I think Reclipped is a space where, like, people are giving you a bit of a blueprint, right? If you don't know where to start. I know I get a lot of imposter syndrome around being a creative and making some cool fashion piece or whatever. It's like, No, there's people out there that can literally help you out if you ask the right questions and be like, hey, what would it look like? I have these extra shorts or pants that I would either donate or throw away. What do you guys think I could do with this? Right. So questions as simple as that. And like DIY, YouTube, TikTok, like it's popping off. Like I think definitely like going into more of that space instead of the, oh, I need to be this trend and that thing. It's like, what if you looked at what you already own and create something totally different? And so, yeah, what are some creative and affordable ways you think people can upcycle their clothing to extend its lifespan? And what are some examples that get you stoked? So for upcycling, like fashion pieces, like really simply is if there's a stain on something, you can cover it up. And while we're at the Circular Fashion Playground, I do want to showcase and highlight who we have today. So we have hand embroidery. The hand embroidery kind of works out best if you like have a stain, like if you're clumsy like me and you draw something and you're like, oh, no, I ruined it. You didn't ruin it. You just cover it up with a little flower, move on. <laughs> and then we also have machine embroidery as well. And that's so if you want like a little bit more of an intricate, like ideal, like design. Like if you don't like plain clothes, which I understand, you can add a whole, I don't know, a whole thing. Go crazy. Um, we also have somebody doing airbrush design on things here as well. So it's a lot going on. And you can also just darn, like if you have a sock that has a hole, because, you know, if you wear socks, you probably have a hole in the sock at some point. You can darn it and still wear the sock. Darning is this really cool technique where you just like fix up a hole. Or like if you have jeans or like pants that like have a little rip at the like inseam, you can just patch it and just keep wearing it. Like your favorite pair of jeans do wear out the fastest because they're your favorite and you wear them. So you don't want to get rid of your favorite pair of jeans. You just want to give it a little bit more life and keep it going. (laughs) I love that. Oh, that's fantastic. And, you know, Building off of that, like, what advice would you give to someone looking to build a more sustainable and ethical wardrobe without it breaking the bank? Yeah, so for, like, to build a wardrobe in general is already a different feat. It's already kind of difficult to figure out what your personal style is and what you want to do with that. So for me, I always say, be adventurous, always explore, always ask questions, try new things. Your style doesn't have to be fixed. It can change with time, ebb and flow. And again, that works really well with circularity and like adding, like mending or anything because you're giving something a little, a little new detail. So like if, for example, like I love contrast stitching. So if I'm going to, if I have something that I love and it gets ruined, I'm like, ooh, if I add a little contrast stitch, now I love it again. And as you were saying before, like I also have this feeling of imposter syndrome when it comes to like sewing and being a creative. I don't consider myself a creative. But I'm oh exactly. You're such a creative. See, that's the response I get, and I'm like, I guess fine. It's fine. I sure if you say so, because everybody says that, so I'm like, okay, now I accept it. <laughs> yeah. So like, I barely sew, but it's more so like I come to all of our events, and I'm always at our events just so it's more accessible to me. And I love to be that person, that point person for when other people accidentally walk into our events where they're considering sewing. And I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Why don't you join us? You could learn what you're doing. That's more than I've done. It's really just about like giving yourself grace, giving other people grace to learn, to explore. Did I answer your question? Oh, you nailed it. That was fantastic. And, you know, for people listening, like what role does consumer awareness and demand play in driving the transition away from fast fashion? I think a lot of people can feel like 
oh, well, there's these big behemoths of these big companies and like everyone just like is stuck on these trends. So, like, can anything change? What are, what's your viewpoint on that? Yeah. So first of all, be optimistic. <laughs> Don't live your life in doom and gloom. That's not fun. And I encourage everybody to live their life full of fun and full of joy. But when it does come to consumerism, so I'm a bit of an anti-capitalist and I don't love the consumerism, which is very difficult when you like, I love things. I love artistry. I love seeing different like explorations and different, like I love furniture. I love clothes. So it's like being not a super consumer person while loving things you kind of have to consume is a little confusing. <laughs> being a person in society. <laughs> But basically, um, I would say, again, allow yourself to hmm, allow yourself to kind of just be motivated and encouraged and inspired. Like you can look at what different brands are doing, but also do vote with your dollar. Like, sure, they might get your click through rate because you like went on their website, but you didn't buy anything. And if you go to them and you like go on their Instagram, you're like, hey, I don't like what you're doing. Do better. Like, <laughs> I'm also like an ambassador with Remake and so with Remake they're kind of more so on the activism part where we're they're all about well we I, I'm an ambassador as well but like we're all about like actually going to brands letting them know this is a change we want this is the change we need to see in the industry in total but we will call out this brand specifically like we will be in your messages ruining your social media manager's life get it together. <laughs> yes oh I'm so glad you you popped in Remake shout out to Remake an amazing Amazing entity that is educating the masses about accountability, especially corporate accountability for fashion brands that need to address transparency and sustainability. I, I love Remake. I would say I also want to plug that I'm now officially NRDC's Fashion Act ambassador. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. And what that means is the Fashion Act is really also about corporate accountability, holding companies accountable in the fashion industry addressing the supply chain and the harms that maybe their company has caused or continues to cause when it comes to people on the planet. And I'm really excited to to enter that role with a bunch of other amazing advocates in the sustainable fashion space to really spread the word that we need people to advocate for the Fashion Act. We need people who are, you know, thinking about systemic change, you know, in communities all around the world to say, you know, this isn't right. Like you as fashion companies are making so much money driving demand for things like cheap, fast clothing and ultimately exploiting workers and harming the environment. And so it's important that those of us who have the privilege and the resources and are in this room, that we really take the time and our energy to educate others about how they can get involved on either a policy level or a cultural level by hosting events, changing conversations, and ultimately holding these brands accountable to do something better because we want to shift those standards. So I really appreciate you sharing that. So just to finish this off, this zoomed by, but you have absolutely been such a delight to have on the show, on this live podcast. But I want to know, are there any specific tools or resources or other orgs, you know, you know, including Reclipped and Remake, that you'd love to shout out to people wanting to learn more on the first steps they can take to also be a bit susty in their fashion choices? Yeah, so I would say the first thing is always just asking the people around you, like really, it's having a community. And as like someone who was like developing into adulthood, like during the pandemic, it was like feeling lonely, not having community was definitely like we were in a loneliness epidemic. But you can just ask people and you'd be very surprised to see who knows what, who's willing to share, who's willing to educate. So definitely, I would say your first resource is always the people around you. Just because, like, learning how to sew is kind of easier in person than, like, watching a YouTube video. Right. Like, also, yeah. Like, it's cool in theory, but you're, like, you're going to, like, pause that video, like, 20 times in, like, a 30-second frame. So just just find somebody to help you out. And also, like, don't forget, like, your elders are also available, too. And they probably know more than you think because they just don't talk about it. Like, it's weird. Like, they have the skills and they just are willing to share. They just don't advertise. So definitely check in with the people in your life. And then also for sure, Reclipped, we also like on our stories, we're always sharing what we find inspiring, educational, and specifically within New York City, but definitely expand. Find the people in your neighborhoods, find the people in your buildings, go in your little group chats, like, hey guys, I have this idea. Can we brainstorm real quick? Like the Reclipped group chat is often us like planning events, but also like, hey, so I have this idea. What do you think? It's also just like talking to people, but then also like, 
it's so weird because I kind of hate social media, but I only keep social media as a resource. So if you are in my boat where you're like, I hate it and need it as a resource, just it's okay. We're all here. Just just follow the people, see the thing, go home, take a deep breath. <laughs> and it's okay. Like resources are cool. And that's like one of my favorite things about social media. Like it is draining, but like we're on it for a reason. And it's kind of to learn. We just pretend it's not. And what skills handle on social is Reclift? So Reclift is at Reclift, which is like <laughs> Sell it out, fun. <laughs> so it's R E C L Y P T. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're on us on Instagram like that. And also our website is reclip.com. We post our events. We have newsletters. We kind of have events like kind of obsessively because this is like all of our hobbies. So we're like, hey guys, what are we doing this weekend? Okay, we can do a thing. I'm like, okay, cool. I guess I'm like booked the, every weekend this month. That's fine. I love it. I'm having a great time. <laughs> it's like accidentally like half of my free time is like, I'm just with the gals. We're just sewing today. It's fun. And like going home, I'm like, maybe I'm going to buy some knitting supplies. Like I have knitting needles ready for whenever I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, we are going to pull out the knitting instructions. We're going to make a scarf like crochet, whatever you want to do, go crazy. Just be, it's an artistry. Just do what you want. I love that. And yeah, I just want to, I just want to shout out the, uh, yeah, NRDC Fashion Act. Check out that initiative. Check out Remake. Definitely check out Reclipped as another shout out. And we're going to put a lot more resources in the show notes of other amazing susty fashion brands and initiatives that we think you all should check out. So thank you so much for joining us on the Brown Girl Green podcast today. Thank you, Reclipped, for letting me host a live show at your amazing circular playground coming up right before Climate Week, New York City. It's popping off. And thank you all to my live audience who came today to listen to today's show. Thank you. And yeah, for people listening, this is Christy Drutman with Brown Girl Green, where I interview environmental leaders and advocates about justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as creative solutions to the climate crisis. I'm working to change the image of what it means to be an environmentalist in the 21st century. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to shows to Brown Girl Green, the Brown Girl Green YouTube channel, and follow at browngirl underscore green and the new Brown Girl Green Podcast Instagram at Brown Girl Green Podcast to check out this episode and many others. Thank you all and catch you on the next episode. Thanks.